So this is the website where from where you download the Anaconda edition. So once you have downloaded Anaconda and installed it, this is how it will look. So you have to come down and launch Jupyter Notebook. So from here, if you hit launch, you'll get this screen with some of the folders pre-installed. Here you can click on new and you can create a Python notebook. Here you can basically run Python without any issues. So this is where you can download Power BI. You just have to choose your choose the language and you can hit download and it will start downloading. So let's get into our coding part for today. So today we are analyzing an IPL data set. Let me give you a quick peek how the into the data set. So this is the data set as you can see we have got several columns and we have got some data. As you can see this goes way down and we have got match ID innings, uh, batting team, bowling team, over, ball, batsman and, and all of that. We'll get into that. So let's start. So these are some of uh, the basic libraries that we are going to use today. I have saved this file in my local folder. Uh, this is the part where we are reading the file. We are using the pandas library. And as is a CSV file, this is the function I'm calling. We can read pretty much all the files that we have. You can read it from some online storage as well. You just have to provide the URL over here. And to run this, you just have to hit Control Enter. So this is running. This star mark indicates that this cell is being run and it is completed. So we'll now have a look at the different data types that we have. So you can see these are the columns that we have. Int64 shows that these particular columns have integer type data and batting team, bowling team, all of these are string. For those who are not from programming background, this is text you can consider. So these are the various columns and the data types. Now we'll have a look at the sample data. So this is what the data looks like. We have as you can see, we have data for each over and each ball. We have got who is the batsman, who is in a non-striker end, who is the bowler and all else. Okay, one thing to notice here, NAN is not a number because there is no data in this. That's why it is displaying NAN. Now this will run this. So describe is a function where we use to have a good understanding of how a data set looks like. We'll understand when I run this. So as you can see here we have the various matrices available and down here we have got all the columns that we have in our data set. So we can see we have 1,64,750 records for match ID, innings, batting team, bowling team, over and all. Then they're trying to find what is mean of this. So for match ID the mean metric is not of much use but when you consider the runs and all that is scored you can find out the average runs that has been scored. It also gives us some other important observations for example the minimum and the maximum values. So let's have a quick look at the va maximum values. So as we can see the maximum value of innings is 4. Now. There are two innings, the first innings and the second innings. Now what happens if we have a super over? So during the super over, the first innings will be marked as three and the last innings will be marked as four. Then we can see the number of the maximum value for the overs is 20, which is correct. Then we see maximum value of a ball is nine, which is, that means that a, a bowler has actually bowled nine balls in a particular over because of wide balls and no balls. Then we go and have a look at rest of the data and we can see for total runs the maximum value is 10 which we should have a be better look at because it is not possible to have 10 runs out of a single ball. So this is what I have surmised over here. So the maximum value for a total ball here is shown is 10 which is not feasible. So we need to have a better look for balls where 
the total runs is actually more than 7. We are considering that 7 is the maximum possible runs that can be scored out of a ball that is a no ball and then a 6 is hit. So this is an offering from Pandas itself. This library is called Pandas Profiling. This gives actually gives us a very good profile of the data. Now this takes some time to run. That's why I ran this before and this is what we have. So what we'll have here will contain some statistical terms. As I said before, it is very essential to have a basic understanding of the statistical subjects. Now, all the columns are considered as variables. So we know that we have 21 columns. The total number of observations we know is 1,64,000 and some. Then it is showing how many cells have missing values. So 47,000 cells do not have value. The percentage is 13.6. And the variable types it is saying that some are numerical and some are categorical. So numerical means that they have got they have got numeric values and categorical means they have got text values which have a finite number of values in them. So what am I talking about here? Let's say we are talking about the batsman. So we have a finite number of batsmen in the game, right? It can be 10, 12, 15, 20, 100. But a numeric value can have n number of different values. That's what we mean by variable types, numerical and categorical. Then match ID, this, this doesn't give us much of insight because it is ID that we are kind of allocating to each match to make it unique. Then we have the value of innings. As we can see again, we have four distinct values, one, two, three, and four. So out of all the values you can see, this is the distribution. Then we have a batting team. So we can go on and, and for each of the columns, we'll gather some insight from here. The number of distinct values. Then if we have any negative values, if we have any positive values, if there are zeros here and how much the memory it is assuming. So we can have a good look, but we'll do that later. So if you come here, now we'll check. So from the profiling set, these are the inferences that we can draw. That we have five duplicate rows which need to be looked at. So these are the inferences that we can draw from the profile that we have gathered. So we have five duplicate rows which need to be looked at. So teams, that is batting team and bowling team has 14 distinct data. Therefore, we'll have to categorize it. Players also are, are a finite number. So we also need to categorize them. We have got missing values in player dismissed, dismissal kind and filter columns, which are okay. The maximum value of total runs is 10, which needs to be checked further. All of these insights you can gather from this profile that we have here. Next is we are looking at the data that has got total runs greater than 7. So this is bowling team. We'll have a look at the entire data set. So as you can see, this is the column for total runs. These are the extra runs and these are the batsman runs. So batsman run plus extra runs is equals total runs. So here somewhere lies the problem. Let's get, go on. So here we'll see again that the maximum value here is 10. We are just calling the describe function on the data set that we have gathered over here. This is so we have filtered out the rows for which the total runs is greater than seven. Then we'll check which of these are unique. So here we can see that there are 33 outliers where total runs of a single ball is more than seven. So we have 33 such records where we have one ball and we have got runs which, are, which is more than seven. We'll split this data into two groups as there are only two values, eight and 10. Here you, here you can see from this result. So when we run a unique function on the total runs, we see that the unique values are only 10 and eight. So this is a standard procedure. We have to convert all the column headers to lower cases and we see that already all the values are in lower case. So nothing has to be done as of yet. Then we might also have some errors in categorical data. So this is actually seeing all the teams that we have in the bowling column. So as we can see, the Pune team here, 
we have rising Pune super giant and again we have rising Pune super giants. So this is clearly an error when uh, the data was recorded. So we can this is again the observation that I have made and we know that the name is rising Pune super giant. So this is the cell which will replace all the records with Pune super giants to rising Pune super giant. And we can check that. Here also for the bowling team the same error is there as it was for the batting team. So if we run it for the bowling team then it is fixed. Then we'll have a look at all the missing data that we have. So this is we are trying to find the total number of null values and then their percentage. So you can see for filter value we have a total records of 158832. So these many records have got null values. The percent is quite high. And then for dismissal kind also the same kind of value and for player dismissed. But for other columns there is no missing values. The total number of missing values is 0 for all the columns except these three. Now what does this mean? So when we are having a look at the data you can see that DA1 is, was caught by Mandeep Singh, right? So all the values, the values for these columns are vacant except the balls on which there was a wicket. So player dismissed the name of the batsman who was dismissed. Then dismissal type is again the way in which he was dismissed. And in case of a catch or something, we have name of the filter. So that's why we have so many empty rows, empty values in these three columns. Again, switching back to the Jupyter notebook. Now we'll treat uh, the outliers. That is the rows which has got total runs greater than 7. We'll check which rows has got 8 and we'll check which rows has got 10. So when you run this, you see that we have quite some values which has got total runs as 8. So this is the total run and you can see that wide run is 0, by run is 4, leg by 0, no ball 0, penalty is 0 and the batsman has scored a 4 and again there is an extra run of 4. So here is the problem. If a batsman is scoring a 4, there is no way there can be an extra 4 runs, right? So usually what happens is when there is by run scored a 4, it goes to the extra column. The batsman doesn't get credit for those four runs. Similarly, here also you can see the same thing. Here it is leg by. So again, you have a leg by your four runs and the batsman is again hitting four runs, which is again impossible because the leg bys are considered as extras. So we have to do something about all these. So what is the observation? Observation is an outlier can be due to a leg by or a by has been added to the individual score of the batsman, which is wrong because a batsman can't score if a by or leg by or four runs is there. Also in a no ball scenario, a batsman hits seven runs, which is theoretically possible and yet unrealistic. We are talking about the second column that we have a no ball of one run and again the batsman is hitting seven runs. This is also not feasible. Hence, they have limited the increment of a batman's score to 6 and added one extra run to the team score for a no ball. So what happens when a batsman hits a 6 on a no ball? The batsman gets credited for the 6 runs and the one extra run for the no ball is added to the team score under extras. Similarly, we'll check for 10 runs. Here again, we have got some rows where the total runs is 10. Again, the batsman run is 5 and the extra runs is 5. Again, we can see some runs in wide. So how do you get 5 runs in wide? It means during a wide, there was a by run of 4 as well. And again, this is under extra. This, a batsman doesn't get credit for these, this 4. But here, again, there has been a mistake and the batsman get, gets credit for all the five runs, which is wrong. 
So this is just another observation. Here too the outliers arise because of the extras from the wide ball will change the batsman individual score to zero and just keep the extra run in the team score. So essentially we'll be removing five under from the batsman column but we'll keep the five in the extras column. So the total runs will be five and five is coming from the wide runs only from the extras. So here I have written a function, the function which will clean the data. So we have got some scenarios that we are covering. We are considering if the total runs is greater than 7 and there is no wide ball. So there is no wide runs. We return 0 and the extra runs, whatever we have. So here 0 is actually what will be assigned to the batsman and extra run will have. So we are considering these columns that we have 5 in, in our wide column. So we are keeping this value in the extras and we are just converting the score of the batsman to 0 in this particular ball. So this is what it means. Then again, if we have total runs greater than 7 and we have buy runs which is not equal to 0. So we have got some buy runs. Again in that case, we are returning runs hit by a batsman as 0 and then the extra runs. Similarly, when total runs is greater than 7 and we have got some leg buys and some no balls. But for no ball, the rule is different. For wide buy and leg buy, the batsman doesn't get credit for any of the runs that he, he scored. But if you hit a 6 in a no ball, the batsman gets credit for 6 runs. So only if we have some run under the no ball, what we do is we return 6 as the runs hit by the batsman and the total runs is 6 plus the extra runs. And this is how you apply a function to an entire data set. So I'm saying this data frame for this column and this column, this value will be assigned to batsman runs and total runs will have the value of this. And I apply this function to the entire data frame. Okay. The error comes, it says name, clean total runs is not defined. Why is that? Because while I was showing you, I forgot to run this cell. So now it knows what clean total runs is. And when I run this, it is taking some time as it will apply this particular function across all the rows that we have. So here we are using a data frame, which is an offering of pandas. It is very similar to a table that we have in SQL but we can't write SQL queries. Uh, these are the syntaxes that we use. So as you can see, this is processed now. Now we'll look into the duplicate records. So these are the duplicate records that we have. The values are same, even the match ID, inning ID, over and the ball. So there, what this is saying is for the match ID 221 in the first innings, there are two records corresponding to the first ball of the fourth over, which is incorrect. So we'll have to remove these duplicates. And again, this is a function from pandas, which does it. The thing to notice is that the functions and everything I'm using, they are, the, the name of the functions are very insightful. So if you're dealing with duplicates, if you write something, you'll soon realize. So you come down here, and DLV is the name of the data frame that we're using. And if you're talking about duplicates and if you hit tab, it automatically gives you the functions which has got duplicate with it. And if you're considering of dropping something and if you do drop and you type tab, then you can already see we have got four functions with drop and you can spot drop duplicates very easily. So good way is to always have a good look at the pandas documentation. And also when you're trying to find a function, you can kind of guess what the name should be. You can type and press tab and you can check if you're getting a meaningful function. Okay, so let's move on. Now this, this is about data visualization. Now that we have gathered the data, we actually went through the data, looked how the data looks like, what is the, the data type of each of these variables, each of these columns, then we checked 
if there was some cleaning involved if we have to you know change the name okay now comes the portion of data visualization once we have got rid of the duplicates then we can move on so let's just go back and think what we have done till now so we have loaded the data so if we go back if we try and remember the steps involved in data analysis first is the objective the objective is set we are trying to analyze the ipl data we are trying to gather insights we are trying to find who has scored most runs who has try who has taken the highest number of wickets so these sort of insights we are trying to gather then we have got hold of the data set then we went to the data set and looked if there was any cleaning involved we saw that name of all the columns are in lower case which is good for us we then checked what are what is the percentage of missing values that we have in the particular data set then we checked the minimum and maximum values across various columns and as we saw that there was some cleaning necessary for the total runs then we also checked what are the teams which are the teams that are playing and we saw there was a problem with the name of the pune team it was different in two different cases so we have cleaned the data we have tried and gathered all the problems that the data set has now it is time to do some real analysis on the data so these are some notebooks that will be using from here on so this is just for importing all the various packages and libraries that we will need and this is for creating a new copy of the notebook because we have a uh, the initial notebook that we have now is rid of all the problems rid of all the anomalies so we'll create a copy of this notebook and then we will start our analysis okay now we are trying to find the top 5 batsmen based on their runs so we have the new data frame we're doing a group by operation so we are trying to group the entire data by their batsmen and for each match so for let's say a player a how much has he scored in match number 10 or match number 15 and then we are doing a sum operation and after that we are concerned about the five batsmen so if we run this we can see that sk raina has scored the highest runs way above 5000 and then we have virat kohli very close almost 5000 so these are the top 5 batsmen in ipl so finding the batsmen and their runs is not enough we have to find some more details now what do i mean by that okay so this is a function that we have we are trying to find the number of matches they have played what is their highest individual score and the average so this is the function i have run that and now let's see what do we have so now we have the top 5 players with their total runs the matches they have played their average and their highest individual scores so we'll try and create a particular graph with this inside that we have gathered here i am using a library that i imported earlier the name of the library is boke there are various libraries that are available you can use pandas itself pandas has some good good offerings in the data visualization domain then we have matplotlib seaborn and all of that we will learn about that later here we are using boke and this is what it looks like now we'll also try and create these graphs in power bi also as i mentioned it to you earlier but here is just a brief quick glimpse of what we have gathered but as i told you we'll also do it in power bi but here is a quick glimpse of what we have done till here so you have got the top 5 players and hovering on that gives you their matches runs average and highest and we can do it for 10 different 
you know, top 10 batsmen, top 50 batsmen, all you have to do is there's a function that we're using n largest because we have passed the value 5, that's we are getting for 5. So as you can see, it is very easy to use Python and create insights out of the data. Now we'll be looking at bowlers. So we are looking at what kind of dismissals we have. So when you run this, you can see as, as I showed you in the data set that there is an NAN value which is not to be considered then we have caught which is in case of a catch is taken by a particular fielder then it's bold run out LBW caught and bold stumped retired heart hit wicket and obstructing the field as we know of all the ways that a batsman can be dismissed the bowler does not get credit if and only if the batsman gets out due to one of these three ways retired hurt run out or obstructing the field there are also some NAN values our goal is to remove such data so from here we have hard coded all the dismissal kinds that we're concerned about so we have caught bold lbw caught and bold stumped and hit wicket so here we are trying to filter so this is how you filter data in pandas so you go and we are concerned about player dismissed where the data is not null and our value of dismissal kind is within this array that we have and then we are doing some extra op operations this is actually to find the number of wickets that a bowler has taken in each match so if we run this we'll see what we have got so we have bowler a Ashish Reddy with match ID 341 and wickets 2. So that means A Ashish Reddy in match 341 has, has taken 2 wickets and it follows. But this is not our target. Our target is to find the top 5 bowlers who has got the most wickets. So what we'll do? We'll have to do a group buy on this bowler and we'll have to do a sum on all the wickets that he has taken. So we do a group buy on the bowler and we are trying to do a sum on wickets we don't need the match id we just need the bowler and the number of wickets he has taken and from there we need the top five so here the function is we have n largest and we pass the parameter five and when we run this you can see the bowler with the highest number of wickets in ipl is sl malinga followed by a mishra and pp chawla but this is not enough we have to know how many matches the bowler has played to take this many number of wickets what is his best statistics so we'll continue with this so this is a function which will give us all the details the number of matches he has played the his total wickets his runs in the matches number of runs that has been scored against him in that particular match and this gives us a this returns us the list of that when we run that we have the function now you have to apply the function across the data frame and this gives us the details so sl malinga with a wicket of 154 in 85 matches his best is five wickets for 31 runs then we have a mishra pp chawla so they have got wickets very close amit mishra has i am assuming a mishra is amit mishra so a mishra has taken 146 wickets in 87 matches his best is five wickets for 19 runs wow see okay now we'll try and create a graph out of this and we'll see how it looks like so again i am using bokeh this is available in the bokeh.js documentation again we'll be using bokeh and this is available in bokeh documentation how to create graphs and all what are the parameters that you need to pass so these are the bowlers with the most wickets malinga mishra chawla bravo and harbhajan singh and if you hover on them it will show you their details their matches wickets and their best performances till date okay now we have a good understanding of how the batsmen have performed the top five batsmen in the history of ipl and also the best bowlers in the history of ipl now we'll have a good look at how the teams have performed so what we are trying to do here our agenda here is to find out the total number of wins a team has and how many wins does the team have 
when they have batted first and when they have bowled first so that it is easier for them to decide if they should bat first or bowl first. I know most of you will say that this is based on the pitch conditions but the pitch conditions are not available in the data set so we are just trying to analyze how the team has performed under stress conditions. As most of you are aware of, we are under a lot of stress when we have to chase a big total. So here we are grouping the entire data by the match. So in one particular match, then in one particular innings, then the batting team, the bowling team, and we are trying to find the sum of the total runs. So in each match, in each innings, who has scored what? So when you run this, we'll get a data set like this. So in match one, first innings, batting team was Sunrisers Hyderabad, the bowling team was Royal Challengers Bangalore, and the total runs was 207. So Hyderabad scored 207 runs against Bangalore, and Bangalore scored 177 runs. So from here, we can figure out that Hyderabad won against Bangalore in this particular match. And then we'll group this entire data. So what is our objective? Our objective is to go through this data set and figure out which team has won, to eliminate the records which indicate that the team is losing. So we group the entire data by the match ID, which means for each match we only need one record. And then how do we pick? We pick the particular record which has got the maximum total runs. I mean, obviously, in this case where the total run is 207 and 177, 207 has won. So we pick this row out of these two. And what do we select? We select the inning, the batting team, and the total runs. And when you run this, you see that for first match, Hyderabad has won, for second match, Pune has won, but in which innings? In second innings. And thus we know which team has won how many matches in which innings. Then we'll do some more transformation to create the graph because our graph uh, bokeh.js is not compatible with this form of the data. So we'll have to do some more transformations. We'll just order the entire data set by the batting teams and how many wins they have in each innings. So Chennai Super Kings, in, when they have batted first, has got 55 wins. When they have batted second, they have got 37 wins. And with this data, we'll try and create a graph. As you can see, first bat is this, second bat is this, and this label over here helps explain who has won what. And if you hover over this, it will show you the total wins for all these teams you can figure out. So you can see for most of the teams, statistics says that the teams have performed well when they have batted first. Only for night riders, you can see that they have more number of wins when they have batted second, and also for rising Pune Supergiant. But for all the other teams, okay, we also have Kochi, where they have a total wins of seven and they have won more in when they have batted second. But for all the rest of the teams, the big bad wolves as we have it, who have got total wins of 100 and 92. For all of them, you can see there is a clear distinction. So the number of matches won by all of these teams are way more when they have batted first than batted second. Again, you can consider it pitch, but statistics says it's different. Then we are trying to do some more analysis. All of us are very excited about the number of six a player has hit. The error is for the number of sixes. So we will we'll try and find out who has scored the highest number of sixes in the game of IPL. So again, what are you trying to do here? We are trying to find out the rows where the batsman has scored a six and will group the entire data set by the name of the batsman and find how many. So when you run this, you see Chris Gale has scored a massive amount of sixes. It's 299 followed by SK Raina with 195. There is a difference of more than 100, which is great. So Gale here has absolutely hit the balls out of the stadium. This is great to know. 
next time when they're trying to pick players maybe they'll choose gale as he hits the most number of sixes now the cricket comprises of batting bowling and fielding we, we have been only talking about batting and bowling till now now is the time to look have a look at how the fielders have performed so here we are trying to find out how many catches does one particular player has and we're also trying to put the number of runouts they have to their names so now we are filtering the data set with only the dismissal kinds when it is caught and it is run out and then we will join these two data sets it is very similar to a join in sql if some of you are from programming background we join these two based on the name of the filter and then we are filling zero so there might be players we have got we have got catches but they have zero run outs for them it would have been nan we don't want that we are just filling it as zero so this fill now is a function that we use to fill the values which are not numbers with a particular number and when you run that what is it that you get kd karthik has got the highest number of catches 102 and he has got 14 run outs to his name followed by raina de villiers dhoni and utappa then as i said the number of six is great we can see that gale has scored 299 sixes but is it exactly what we are after are we looking at the big hitters are they the ones who are going to win your game let's have a close look so this is something that we are trying to find out the runs that have been scored so here we are actually grouping the entire data set with the batsman runs and we are only considering rows which has got a score of 1 2 3 4 and 6 and so that it looks cool we are adding s to it so here is how it looks by scoring singles 60,755 runs have been scored by hitting twos 21,000 and 002 runs have been scored by taking triples 1,617 runs have been scored by hitting boundaries we have 74,424 runs and by hitting sixes we have 46,874 runs so you can see the bulk of the runs the top two runs have been scored by hitting fours and taking singles after that hitting six has come and also from extras 1100 and 185 runs have been scored so though we can see gale here is a huge hitter of sixes but the bulk of the run is not being scored by hitting sixes so these are the kind of analysis that you can do from this you can decide which players to choose which players to pick from should i go for players who can hit more sixes or should i go for players who can hit boundaries and get the game you also need to have a good look at the bowlers who has got the most number of wickets if we can pick a all-rounder you can see that when we are trying to find the number of catches the name of suresh raina came and also when we are trying to calculate the top five batsmen you can see that Rainer's name was here so is there any data overlap players who are good batsmen and also who are good bowlers who have got good wickets or batsmen who have who take great catches and all that so this is the analysis that we have you can go ahead and do way more analysis afterwards i hope this was exciting now i'll flip to power bi to show you the kind of dashboards that we can create so as i was telling you this is the place from where you can download power bi we were also creating uh, graphs and we were also generating some visuals from uh, the notebook itself but power bi is also a very strong powerful tool with very exciting visual effects and all this is also something to consider so if you are really excited about data visualization power bi is something that you should definitely check out but on the other hand if you are just going through the entire process it is okay if you are creating your graphs in jupyter notebook for now but feel free to have a look at power bi so this is the place from where you can download power bi now let's switch to power bi so this is how it looks and i'll try and create a graph here so that you can see how easy it is to create a graph here so no coding is required it is all practically drag and drop 
So clicking on get data and we are trying to load a CSV file. We will just create and we'll load the batsman data. So this is there and we hit load. And we have the data set with us. Uh, we can have a look at how the data looks, how the names are and everything. So because I saved it from Jupyter Notebook, uh, we can rename these because this will now be used in uh, report. So let's go ahead and uh, rename these names. So instead of writing AVG, that's how it, easy it is. So just with a few mouse clicks, you are able to rename. But this is, but for people who are code savvy, they can go and do it in Jupyter Notebook itself. I wanted to show you how it can be done from here. That's why we are doing it. Yes. Now we have everything ready with us. We'll try and create a graph. So let's go. For this, um, we have got various kind of graphs here. We have got stacked bar chart, stacked column chart. Then we have clustered bar chart, clustered column chart, and you can see stacked bar chart. So this will be on top of this with 100%. This is line chart. We have some area charts as well. If you want to use some maps, here we have map and all of that. If you want to use a pie chart or a donut chart, we have all of that over here. With just one click, you'll have the graph. So let's go ahead and create a line chart and this is it and what is it that we want we want the name of the batsman and the total runs that he has scored and they're trying to generate it and here as you can see we have it so this is how it looks and whenever you hover on a particular name you can see the name of that particular batsman and the runs that he has scored and that is how it goes. But this is not enough. We also want to see um, their average. We also want to see uh, their highest scores and all of that. To do that, we'll come on this format option and here, okay, first things first, I think because on hover it is showing name of the batsman, we do not need this. There is an X axis. We can come here and we can kind of shut down the x-axis so when we hover over there you can see the names of the person and the runs they have scored and also now everything looks good and we will try and add some more information when we hover over there so for this we come over here we have the option of tool tips so it is saying add data fields here so what we can do is we can drag and drop fields over here matches their average and then their highest scores so now when you hover over a particular point you see name of the player is de Villiers. the runs he has scored the matches he has played his average runs in, in particular match and then his highest so see that's it how easy is it to, to create a graph in power bi so i'll show you a dashboard that i have created before recording this session and this is how it looks so we have got a total of 696 matches a total of 216,000 runs being scored across all these matches we have more than 850 players playing this game wow that is really great and here it comes we have got more than seven and a half thousand sixes being hit now that is something and here we have some graphs as you can see this graph actually shows for all the teams that we have the number of wins that they have had in first innings and in second innings so you can hover over and check so these this graph here is actually explaining the distribution of runs that we have uh, as you can see 34 almost 35 percent of the total runs has been scored in boundaries we have 28 percent runs being scored as singles then we have 21 percent as sixes so you can see uh, this gives us a much uh, better understanding of which is the most important part of the game then we have players 
who has hit the highest number of sixes you can continue to go and it will show you who has got what number of sixes then this graph is actually explaining which fielder has got how many uh, catches and runouts to his name so this is ordered from highest to lowest then here are two tables that i'm showing names of the player who has scored highest and all of these you know you can uh, go ahead and uh, sort it using all, all all of that so this is how it looks the highest the player to have scored most runs is sk Raina. here it is as you can see it is uh, not sorted we can sort by uh, wickets so you can see the player with the highest number of wickets is malinga the number of matches he has played his um, best ever so these are the kind of dashboards that you can create uh, and these are very simple to use this this always comes in handy so that's all usually businesses collect huge amounts of data but making sense of it can be a bit of a nightmare data analysis is that process that can convert this raw data into meaningful information and that will help businesses make the best decisions.